So I'm going to be talking about the War Powers Act. So after President Richard Nixon became president in 1969, he began secret bombings in Cambodia. And they were kept secret from Congress and the entirety of the U.S. for more than a year. So then news of the Mai Lai Massacre, which was where U.S. troops killed unarmed civilians and children, uh, broke in 1969. And then the Pentagon Papers, which were stolen documents revealing the government had misled the people about the Vietnam War, were published in 1971. And this created um, distrust towards the government. So by 1973, all American troops had left Vietnam and the Senate Armed Service Committee had begun hearings on the bombings in Cambodia and Congress ordered an immediate end to the bombing raids. Also at the same time, Congress drew up the War Powers Resolution. The resolution required the president to consult Congress before they start the hostilities and report regularly on the deployment of the U.S. troops in other countries. Uh, so further, the president will have to withdraw forces within 60 days if Congress had not declared war, authorized the use of force. And then Nixon at first did veto the War Powers Resolution, and in his message, he said that the re resolution would attempt to take away uh, by a mere legislative act, powers which the president has properly exercised under the Constitution for almost 200 years, and the only way in which the constitutional powers of a branch of the government can be altered is by amending the Constitution. He also noted that the Congress already had a constitutional check on the president's power with its funding power. And then Congress passed a law over President Nixon's veto. So in the actual act, it says uh, to fulfill the intent of the framers of the Constitution and ensure th that the collective judgment of both the Congress and the president will apply to the introduction of United States armed forces into hostilities, which was basically the summary of what the act stated. So also in the act, it states the main points of what the act is doing. And A, it is to repel an armed attack upon the United States, its territories and possessions, to take necessary and appropriate retaliatory, retaliatory actions in the event of such an attack, and to forestall the direct and imminent threat of such an attack. Uh, B, to prepare an, ar an armed attack against the armed forces of the United States located outside of the United States, its territories and possessions, and to forestall the direct and imminent threat of such an attack. And then C, to protect while evacuating citizens of the United States as rapidly as possible from any country um, in which citizens are present with the express or tacit consent of the government of, what, of such country and who are being subject to a direct and imminent threat to their lives, either sponsored by such government or beyond the power of such government to control. And then D, um, pursuant to specific statutory authorization, but authority to introduce the armed forces of the United States into hostilities shall not be inferred from any provision of law, including any provision contained in any appropriation act, unless such provisions specifically authorize the introduction of such armed forces and hostilities and exempts the introduction of such armed forces from compliance with the provisions of this act.